Welcome back to the OK Turbo Shop. I thought I'd give a little update here since we went to Springfield, Missouri to NARAM and I posted some videos there and had some good flights. It was a little windy, it was very hot. Didn't get to fly any high power, mostly mid power and low powers. Um, but I did put Mighty Mick on the launch rail and that's what was in that one video. Um, it had a CTI I 236 loaded up. Uh, launch control officer hit the button after a countdown and it went whoom. At first I thought it had just spit out the uh, igniter, but um, it actually uh, had a motor Kato. So the, the nozzle came out of the motor, out of the case. The rest of the motor shot through the inside of the body tube, messed stuff up. So I was going to show kind of what, kind of a little bit of what happened and then what I'm doing to rebuild the thing. So, um, Here's some of the carnage. Um, you can see here, this was where that, that motor went up through the motor tube. It was laying, the, this little quick link was laying in a way where I guess it just hit it, the motor hit it, and then just, you know, it happened so violently that it ripped this out of that centering ring. So um, what I did was, you know, I, I ordered some new parts. I ordered a new centering ring. Um, the motor mount adapter was messed up too. It had basically, when the, the nozzle come sh came shooting out the back end, it bent up these uh, clips in the uh, motor mount adapter. This is an adapter that goes from 38 millimeters to the 54 millimeter motor mount that's, that's actually inside the body tube. So there was that, and then I knew I was gonna be adding weight to the fin can. For a while I thought, well, you know, I'll just build a whole new fin can, but it was a brand new rocket. It had never flown and it still looked pretty good. Um, there's a few, there's a little scar here. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there's a little bit of a scar there. Um, the other thing that happened, it came up and went slam back down. Um, it messed up this, this rear um, rail guide. So what I did was I, I kind of injected some epoxy in the crack, trying to straighten things back out. Uh, built that back up with a little bit of epoxy then threaded in a longer screw. So now, now that, that rear um, uh, rail guide is back on and insecure. Um, this kind of shows the, the motor mount adapter will just, just go straight in here like this. And that, that way I can adapt for 38 millimeter motors if I'm, if I want to. Uh, so that's how that kind of goes in there. So this is new, bought it from Locke. Not very fancy. The main upgrade that I did well, let me show you this kind of a repair. I'm not sure if you can see it too well inside of that too, but um, basically what was left of that centering ring, um, I, I got another uh, another centering ring and put a, a new um, eye bolt on it. Uh, basically put some epoxy and slid that down over there. There was enough of an extension beyond the, the motor mount tube and that first centering ring that I was still able to put another centering ring on there. That's basically doubled up there. There's that chunk that's missing, but, but that's, that's secure again, um, epoxied in there really good. So that'll be the new mount for the, the shock cord. The main upgrade, what I was getting to, the main upgrade I'm doing is, you know, I'm adding more weight to the tail end of this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that if I do want to fly it on like some big J bigger J motors, um, that, you know, there'd be so much more weight in the tail end that I'll need to add weight to the, the nose cone. This nose cone is just uh, one of those plastic ones. There's not very much weight to it. So what I decided, what I'd go ahead and do was cut out the bottom of the nose cone and then put in one of these removable nose weight systems from a lock inside of this thing. And, and uh, that way I can add weight if I need to. Um, I can check the center pressure. I've marked that here and I want to make sure I've got, you know, one, maybe two calibers, one and a half, somewhere in there, that much stability. So if I put a big motor in it, I can adjust the weight and it comes with, oh, there's some, uh, coupler tubes that will slide down in here. This is basically just a 38 millimeter motor mount tube is what that is. Um, mounted with the centering ring, which you get from lock with some, uh, blind nuts that go in there. Then there's this this cover that goes over it so you can make adjustable weights that slide inside of that um, and then it's secured with this plate so that you know it doesn't move around but that way you can adjust the weight 
But the other thing that it does, it, it allows me to add a tracker. So I've got one of those Marco Polo trackers, which it's fairly, you know, they're, they're not too expensive, fairly easy to use. But I decided I could, if I'm doing it, I might as well just do it right. We're going to be going to, oh, to Argonia, what do they call it, Airfest, you know, in September, Labor Day. And so what I did was I went ahead and bought a uh, featherweight GPS tracker. So there's there's the tracker. It's mounted inside of about one of the little 38 millimeter sleds from um, Lab Rat Rocketry. It's really nice, fits right in there. This is just the, the lipo or lithium, um, lithium poly, I think it is, battery that comes from Featherweight. So here's the whole, their whole system. <clears throat> Got choked up there for a second. So this is the, uh, this is the, the tracker that, that you get from Featherweight. And I just use their, their battery. This is the ground station and it actually talks Bluetooth to your phone. So, um, the way this, you know, the, the, it's made as a removable nose weight system from lock, but it, it has 38 millimeter motor amp mount tube. So I cut out a, 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 um, bulkhead ring that's just past the, you know, the OD of a 38 millimeter motor mount tube. The, what it allows me to do, if, if I want to move this tracker between different rockets, all I have to really do is, is put a, another, um, Centering ring, 38 millimeter, and then just a normal motor mount retainer will hold that. So that, that fits in there just like that. You could use, you know, something like these clips, but uh, probably what I would do is get one of those plastic screw on motor retainers. But the way this works is this can be mounted inside of this tube. Then I get this other plate and I mount it on top. And that makes it really secure. Now there is an eye bolt there, but I really am probably going to hook up the quick link to the the cord right here. Uh, it just makes me a little nervous having that on, you know, on that that smaller eye bolt there. So anyhow, so let me turn this thing on and kind of show you how it works. Um, let me get things arranged here for a second. Here we go. So there is the ground station. Turn it on. Then there's a little bitty power switch right here. Turn that guy on. Then on the phone. It takes a little while to kind of set it up, but it, it's really not too difficult if you follow the instructions. Okay, so now it's starting to kind of detect everything. The other thing it does, it has to look for satellites. So I think here it's still looking for satellites. There we go. Now it's starting to pick some up. So now it's, it's up to four. Now it's up to five. So it's green. So we're good. And the more satellites that, you know, the GPS sees, the, the better the accuracy is. So it's slowly starting to kind of zoom in on them. Um, so that's the GPS. That kind of tells you what's going on with the GPS. Then when you're ready to track, you click the little tab down here that says track. The other thing it allows you to do is you can kind of get... Let's see, it's kind of pointing at it here. And I think this is the elevation, so it kind of tells you. So now that's kind of the attitude of this thing. Of course, we're so close to each other here, it's not really working exactly right. But, but anyhow, that's kind of how it works. So it's, I haven't really used it yet out in the field. I'm hoping to go to... The Tulsa rocketry launch for this weekend was canceled due to Tulsa County going into a burn ban. So that's not good. Um, but there's another one coming up. I think it's the 21st is the, the, the backup date. If not, then there's Labor Day, Argonia, and then later on in September, there is uh, Tulsa rocketry's High Frontier launch in uh, Pawhuska, Oklahoma. So I have several chances there to, to try and use it. But 
um, it'll allow me to do is to fly this rocket on, on bigger motors, higher altitudes, and not have to worry about losing it and, and all that. So hopefully this works good, um, but it was really easy to set up. So that's, that's that. Plus it adds weight to the nose, which is, is, which is a good place to add it. So rather than just put a chunk of lead, this actually adds a little weight to the front and helps out with, with those kind of issues. So anyhow, so that's that. Turn all this off. Bought me this little case on uh, Amazon to kind of keep it, plus the chargers that uses those micro USB tra um, cables. This is the little charger for the uh, the battery and the in the tracker here. On the ground station, you actually just plug in the micro USB. It just goes right in there. It charges them up. So here's kind of the little case to protect it. It's going to get banged around a rocket, but I figure at least kind of protect it so it doesn't get damaged carrying it around. But you know what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of put the rocket back together, and um, you can kind of watch me do that. Um, Got to fix this, and then really this thing is pretty much ready to go again. Uh, hopefully for Tulsa Rocks Free, if not, it'll be in Argonia. So let me get set up and I'll start putting. Yeah, what I find out with this uh, removable nose weight system is it's it's really secure for holding in the nose weights, but if all that you've got is a little tractor, tracker, it's probably better just to have a, a regular old plastic motor retainer screw on, threaded motor retainer to hold it in, because this all these four screws is just kind of fiddly. Maybe if it was more flush with the end, it might have been better, but... It's really made to, to, to kind of land, that cin the centering ring is made to land on the, oh, the ledge of the uh, the shoulder there inside that nose cone, so. So, putting the plate in. it or not I use these little screws to attach that uh, to kind of secure this bulkhead in here you know if I had a bunch of weight in here for a bigger motor I want to make sure it's secure and it you know even epoxy doesn't really stick to these very well what I normally would do would probably drill it and put it in you know, like a, a, a dowel a, a wooden dowel or, or even maybe a piece of brass you know several places to kind of secure it drill through and that would kind of secure it that way but I, since I've already finished this, you know, you'd have to sand that smooth and, and finish it. Since this was kind of a retrofit, I just decided to use these screws. So that secures that in there into, into that bulkhead. So I didn't want to have to repaint that nose cone. It's pretty much ready to go again. So I'll have to load up another motor, put the ejection charges in, do all that kind of prep, but it's it's back together. I mean, I, <clears throat> I'd rather uh, fix it than build a new one, so. 
even after a motorcado, you can uh, you can fix them. There you go. Hopefully, next video we'll be flying again. <laughs>